everybody, it's Kelly here from Craft and a Cuppa and today I'm going to show you how to make a granny hexagon sweater. I've just done the cardigan version and I've just thought to myself, do you know what, this would look amazing as a sweater. So here we are. Right, things you need to know about this pattern, just quickly. It's made to measure so you can use any yarn and any hook. Um, I've done it for nine sizes, which is extra small to 5XL with around about 10 centimetres positive ease. I have provided all the measurements that you need. Uh, they will be in the description below the video. So if you want to make this sweater for somebody else and they're not your size, then you could use, just use the measurements that I've provided. You can make it for anybody. Um, the bigger the size, the wider the arms and the longer the length. That's just because of the way that the sweater is put together. Uh, so yeah, what you're going to need is a hook. I've got a six millimeter hook. I've got my yarn. I've decided to go for Aran weight. As you can see, lovely pastel -y, almost pastel. That's not quite pastel, but lovely pastel rainbows minus that one and i've decided i'm going to put some blue in between each color to really make it pop uh you also need i can't see anything but where are we a pair of scissors for when you fasten off and weaving ends tapestry needle for weaving in your ends and some stitch markers Right then, let's do it. Right then, what we're going to do is we're going to be making two hexagons and then they're going to fold together in a certain way which will then form the sweater, basically. So, let's start with our first hexagon. It's going to make a slip knot. And attach that to my hook. Now we need to chain six. Then you're going to come back down to your very first chain and you're going to put a slip stitch in there to form a loop. Right, now if you've ever made a granny square, it's basically going to be the same concept, except this is going to have six sides instead of four, because it's going to be a hexagon. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain three, and that is going to class as your first double crochet. And then you're going to place two more double crochets back inside this loop. So that classes as your first granny square cluster of three double crochets. Now we're going to chain two. And we're going to need to repeat that five more times. So we're going to do three double crochets back into that loop in the center. And then we're going to chain two. Now we need to do four more of these double crochet, well, double crochet, granny clusters. So three double crochets back into this loop. Chain two. Three more double crochets back into the loop. chain two, three more double crochets back into the loop, chain two, I'm just going to count how many um, granny clusters I have because I need six and it's quite easy to lose count when you're doing this section so let's go back and have a look. 
we've got one here two three four five i need to do it one more time and then i'll have my six clusters so we're going to do three double crochets back into this loop one two three and then i'm going to chain two and i'm going to join it to the top of my chain three that i made from the beginning of the round with a slip stitch oh i've just come out of there look get back in there there you go i'm just going to double check one more time that i have got six granny clusters around my loop so let's have a look one two three four five six and that's the beginning of your hexagon now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take this little bit here and i'm going to pull it really tight that's the um yarn end from when we first started i'm just going to pull it tight just to close that loop up a bit more okay so i'm going to stick with the same color for the next round if you're changing colour, then turn your work and insert your yarn in any uh, of the chain spaces. We'll always turn our work after every round, okay? So, because I'm staying with the same colour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to do a slip stitch straight back into this chain space. Slip stitch. And now we're ready to start again. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain three. And then we're going to place two double crochets back in this chain space. Now we're going to skip over the next three double crochets. And we're not going to do any chains. We're going to go straight into this gap here, which is the next chain space which is actually your next corner. So we're going to go straight into there with three double crochets. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to place three double crochets into the same chain space again that we've just used. more yarn and that makes a corner and then we're going to do the same thing again we're going to skip over these three double crochets not doing any chains at all we're going to go straight into the next chain space with three double crochets now we're going to chain two and then place three double crochets back into the same chain space that you've just used to create another corner. Again, skipping over these three double crochets and going straight into the next chain space with three double crochets. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to go straight back into the same chain space again with three double crochets. And then again, skipping over the next three double crochets and going straight into the next uh, chain space with three double crochets. chain two and three double crochets back in the same chain space again skipping over these three double crochets and going straight into the next chain space with three more double crochets And 
and then chain two three double crochets back in the same corner chain space which brings us back to where we started we're not going to join to here just yet because we need to go skipping over these three double crochets and we're going to be placing three double crochets in this chain space where we first started to make up our final corner so skip over the, these last three double crochets and go straight into this chain space with three double crochets chain two and then you're going to join it to the top of the chain three that you made from the beginning of the round with a slip stitch there we go starting to look pretty isn't it so i'm changing color now you might not be you might be sticking with the same color if you are sticking with the same color what you need to do is turn your work and slip stitch right back into that chain space and then you're ready to begin the round again now what i'm going to do is just undo that because i'm changing color So I'm going to snip my end off, I'm going to fasten off, there we go. Now before I add my next colour, I like to make both of my hexagons at the same time. It's just a little habit I have, so then you can fold it up and you can look at it together and go oh it's looking amazing and if you're using scraps it's a really good way of doing it because then you can look at what yarn you have left and think yeah I can definitely do a round on this one and a round on that one so yeah I'm going to meet you back here once I've made another one of these just two rounds okay and then I'll be adding my next colour so I'll see you back here in a second Right then, I've now got my two hexagons on the go and I'm now going to add a different colour. So I'm going to put one to one side. I'm going to turn my work so that the wrong side is now facing me. Well, the, the last row that I did anyway, the last round, I mean, sorry, is facing me. I'm going to go in any corner. It doesn't matter which one. I always like to go in a different corner from where I fastened off. It's just a habit. It's just a habit. When I do my granny squares, I always do that. Right, another slip knot. And attach your yarn to your hook. And then I'm just going to go in any corner. Make sure you're in the corner, not in one of the gaps in the center. I'm going to go in this corner here and attach it with another slip stitch like so and then we're just going to carry on doing what we was doing before chain three and two double crochets back in the same chain space then we're going to skip the next three double crochets and go straight into this gap in the center with three double crochets Then we're going to skip over these three double crochets and go straight into the corner chain space with three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets straight back into this corner chain space. And then again, skipping over the next three double crochets and going straight into this gap in the center with three double crochets. Skipping over the next three double crochets and going into the chain space, which is the corner with three double crochets. And we're going to chain two, 
and place three more double crochets back into the corner or the, the chain space corner chain space you know what i mean i hope <laughs> And then again, skipping over the three double crochets and going straight into the gap into the centre with three double crochets. Skipping over three double crochets and going into the corner chain space with three double crochets. Chain two three double crochets back into the same corner chain space skipping over the next three double crochets and going straight into the gap into the center with three double crochets hopefully you're getting a hang of the pattern that we're making three double crochets we're going to skip over those and go straight back into the corner with three double crochets once you get the hang of it, you'll be well away. Chain two, three double crochets back in this corner chain space. And then skipping over the next three double crochets back into the gap in the center with three double crochets. skipping over these three double crochets and back into the corner chain space with three double crochets chain two three double crochets last little bit skipping over these three going straight into the center three double crochets And then again, you'll find yourself at the final chain space, the final corner, which already has your three double crochets, well, your chain three and two double crochets, but we class them as the three double crochets from the beginning. You're going to go straight into that same gap as them with three double crochets. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got my yarn tail in the way. Three double crochets. Hang on, sorry. chain two and then you're going to join it to the top of the chain three from the beginning of the round with a slip stitch there we go i'm going to fasten off again because i'm going to be changing color for the next round and i'm also going to add the blue onto my second hexagon just launch that over there a second but if you're sticking with the same color remember to turn and slip stitch straight back into this chain space and then you're ready to go again but because i'm changing color i'm going to fasten off here and i'm going to turn my work and join in any of the chain or corner chain spaces but we'll get to that in a second because i'm just going to fasten off first Now, if you're changing colour lots, like I am, you're going to be left with a lot of ends. So my tip to you is to weave your ends in as you go and you won't even notice them. It will become a habit, like do a round, fasten off, weave in the ends from the previous round. But I'm also going to share a little tip with you. That end needs to go back in here. Hang on. That one keeps poking through. Right my tip is this center yarn tail always leave that one on there and then weave all of your ends on the same side as this center yarn tail and you will always know that this is classed as your wrong side and that will be the inside of your sweater and that will have all your ends weaved in on that side so i'm going to show you now i'm just going to weave in this one that's from a previous round i'm going to leave that one so i always know that that's the wrong side of my sweater 
And trust me, if you do this, you'll not be left with hundreds and hundreds of ends. I mean, you could be this very rare, amazing person that loves to weave in ends, but I am not. <laughs> oh my goodness, if I left all my ends, I don't think I'd finish a project. I just don't think I could do it. <laughs> I couldn't just dedicate a whole evening to it. Ooh, the thought of it gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm going to come around this corner. So yeah, just weave them as you go and you don't even notice them. You really, really don't. I've got one of my dog's hairs on there. I don't know if you've all got any animal buddies, any animal crochet buddies. Whose hairs get absolutely everywhere. Bless them. Just going to go in one more time. I usually weave back and forth at least three times. And get it back in there it's a bit tight going around the corner mm. we're in it's okay we're in snip that little end off there we go so remember to keep that one in and that's that's going to be the wrong side right, i'm going to meet you back here again in a second because i'm going to add blue to this one because like I say, I like to do both of mine at the same time. You don't have to do it that way. If you prefer to make one hexagon and then do the other one after you've completed the other one, that's absolutely fine. You do it however you want to. We all have our different ways. As long as it all ends up as the same result, that's the main thing, isn't it? Right, I'll meet you back here in a second. Right, I've done my two hexagons with my blue. I'm going to put one to one side. I'm now going to add my next colour. So this is where how I worked before. I'm now going to turn it. Always remember to turn your work after every round to keep it looking even. I'm going to go in any random corner. Find the end of my yarn. Where is it? Go in this one because it's just there so join the yarn with a slip stitch remember if you're keeping the same color to turn your work and slip stitch back into the corner chain space so we're doing a slip stitch because we're attaching our yarn and then same process again chain three two double crochets back in the same corner chain space skipping over the next three double crochets and into this next gap with three double crochets. And then skipping over these three double crochets and going into the next gap with three double crochets. Which brings us to the corner, skipping over these three double crochets I'm going straight into the corner chain space with three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. Back into the same corner. And then again, hopefully you're getting the hang of it now. So I'll show you this uh, little side here. And then I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to meet you back when I've joined my yarn together. Once I've gone all the way around. Right, so we're going to skip over three double crochets and go into the next gap with three double crochets. Skipping over the next three double crochets and into the next gap with three double crochets. And then into the next corner chain space, skipping over these three double crochets into the corner chain space with three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. And then we're just going to continue doing the exact same thing on each side. 
and I'm going to meet you back here when I get to the final side. Right, I'm at my final bit now. I've done the last side. All I've got left to do is to finish off the final corner. So I'm going to go in the final corner chain space with, cha oh, sorry, <laughs> three double crochets. Oh, oh my goodness. Let's start that again, shall we? Three double crochets in this corner chain space. Chain two and join to the top of the chain three from the beginning of the round with a slip stitch. Right, so I am going to add a few more rounds to each of my hexagons and then I'm going to meet you back here and I'm going to show you how we fold the hexagons and measure them to make sure that we are on track to the correct size that we are making. Okay, so remember if you're sticking with the same colour, I'm going to be sticking with the same colour because I'm doing two rainbow one blue two rainbow one blue so remember if you're sticking with the same color you're going to turn and slip stitch back into that corner chain space and if you're changing color you're going to fasten off and you're going to turn your work and join in any corner not in the centers in the center gaps just the corner gaps okay so i'm going to add a few more rounds to each of my hexagons and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Right, I've added some more rounds onto both of my hexagons. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you how we're going to be folding them so you can have a little play about and look at it and go, oh, it's looking amazing. So what we're going to do is go take one and you need to get one side like this and then we've got our or oh, if you've kept that there, that is um, yarn tail for the wrong side. That is the inside of the cardigan. So this is the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and I'm going to fold it in half like that. And I'm just going to run my fingers along this side. I'm going to lay it down and just flatten it out. And that's one half of a cardigan. It doesn't look an awful lot like one at the minute because it's still very small. But that is how you fold it. I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side. Fold it. Let me show you again. So I did rush that bit. Take one side. Fold it in half. Run your fingers down that side. I'm going to turn it the opposite way though. So it's going to go there. I mean it's very tiny at the moment as you can see. But you get the idea. Very clever concept. It is very clever. Right, I'm going to show you how we measure our hexagons. So in the description uh, below the video, I've included some measurements. Now you're going to need the width of half a hexagon. So I'm just put one to one side. Also, before I uh, go ahead and say this, the hexagons do not lay flat. And that is how they're, they're supposed to be. They lay all higgledy piggledy so don't worry if you're like oh mine's not coming out right if it looks like this it definitely is coming out right because it just doesn't lay flat but when you fold it abracadabra it's flat so yeah and also i have a little tiny disclaimer at the beginning of the video when i went through what things you're going to need completely missed out the most essential part the tape measure Oh, I can't believe I did it. Oh, it's too late to go back and re-record it because I've cut into my yarn now. So, yes, I do apologise. You do need a tape measure for this pattern. So you can measure your garment, basically. So you need half the width of a hexagon. And what we're going to do is just flatten out this side. Don't worry about this bit being all bulky over here. We just want to go from the centre to the center of this one side here. I'm just gonna take that measurement. Now I'm making a size small and according to the measurements, I need to keep working my hexagon 
until this measurement here measures around 17.5 centimeters now i say around because you're working in rounds literally um so you might not get that exact measurement and it just depends what yarn you're using if i was using chunky your stitches are going to be much taller you know so as long as you're close to that number then that's absolutely fine okay there's 10 centimeters positive ease in it okay it's not tight fitting it doesn't have to be on the money with that measurement as long as you're close to it so i'm going to take my tape measure and uh, where are we we're just going to go right from the center across here well mine's at 10 centimeters at the minute according to size small mine needs to get to 17.5 so i need to keep working all my rounds until this measurement here comes to here let's put that one away sorry i forgot about that oh blimey so yeah i think that's all i need to say for this section so what we're going to do is we're going to keep adding our rounds and then uh, I will meet you back here when you have the measurement for your correct size that you're making. Right, see you soon. Okay, I have got both of my hexagons here. As you can see, they're looking pretty awesome, aren't they? I uh, actually did change my mind about my colour scheme. I started to freak out a little bit thinking that the blue between each colour wasn't quite looking right. So I decided to ditch that. And just go straight in with my rainbow for the rest of it and i'm so pleased i made that decision and then i thought i'd join a bit of blue back in here look and i'm just so happy with how it's looking right now because to begin with i nearly frogged the whole thing but i carried on and yeah i'm really happy with it so basically i have now done my two hexagons and i'm making a size small and that is saying that half of my hexagon should be around 17.5 centimeters so let's get my tape measure and see where we're at straight from the center across there we go i'm pretty much there maybe a little bit over 17 and a half but that's absolutely fine only a tiny little bit so yeah i'm happy with that so the next part is going to be seaming. So I'm going to show you again how we're going to fold the hexagons. Um, so if you've done what I said, if you haven't, it doesn't matter. You can pick whichever side you want to be right or wrong. But I left my centre tail in each of mine. So that is my inside of my cardi. I've weaved all my ends on this side only. So this is my wrong side. We're going to be folding our cardigan so that our right side is actually facing out to us and that's how we're going to seam it so i'm going to fold it so that the wrong sides are touching wrong sides together so i'm going to pick up one side just like this fold it straight in half just like that and then run my fingers along this edge and grab it together give it a little shake out and lay it down now the end of my yarn tail is on the inside that is the inside of my cardigan and this is the right side so I'm going to do the same for this one as well so I've got my wrong side here take one side doesn't matter which one fold it in half run my fingers along it again give it a shake out now this one I'm going to flip over so that it's the opposite side just straighten it up a bit like that so the next section we are going to seam the sleeve and shoulder seam and it's basically we're going to seam from here to here Although technically speaking, we're probably going to be going the opposite way, aren't we? Because we work. Well, actually, I suppose it depends if you're left-handed or right-handed. I'm right-handed, so I work to the right. But yeah, we're going to be seaming just this top side here on both pieces. They're still going to be separate, but 
we're going to seam these bits. So let me get my yarn and I'll show you how I'm going to seam mine. So yeah, I mean, if you want to do something different, it's totally up to you. It's your cardigan. But this is how um, I've done the pattern. So if you want to follow this one, then amazing. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to be working with the uh, cardigan right side facing us, like I said. I'm just going to take both pieces like this, but I'm going to drop the back piece just for a second. I'm going to pick up the first piece. I'm going to call this bit the front piece because it's more in front than that. So this is going to be the front piece and that's going to be the back piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my yarn in this corner chain space with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to drop my first piece and I'm going to pick up the back piece. And I'm going to go through the first corner chain space of the back piece with a slip stitch. So they're now joined with slip stitch, chain two, slip stitch. So we're going to chain two again. And I'm going to come on to my front piece, drop the back piece, come to the front piece, skip the first double crochet and I'm going to go into the second one okay so we're going to skip the first one and go into the next double crochet with a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain two I'm going to leave my front piece and come back onto the back piece and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the back piece I'm going to skip the first double crochet and I'm going to go into the second one into the stitch right in the top with a slip stitch and then repeat that process again chain two I'm going to drop my back piece and come back to the front and I'm going to skip the first double crochet here with the next stitch skip the next stitch and put a slip stitch into the second stitch so skip that one slip stitch in there in the front piece only chain two drop the front piece come back to the back piece skip the next stitch and then go in the next one with a um, slip stitch nearly said single crochet do not do a single crochet it's meant to be a slip stitch basically we're just repeating this all the way down I'll go through it a few more times if you though. Chain two, come back to the front piece and leave the back piece. Skip the stitch, go in the next one with a slip stitch. Chain two, drop the front piece, go to the back piece, skip the next stitch and go into the next one with a slip stitch. Chain two, drop the back piece go into the front piece, skip the first stitch and go into the next one with a slip stitch. Go over it a couple more times, chain two, drop the front piece, go to the back piece, skip the next stitch and go into the next one with a slip stitch. Chain two, drop the back piece, come to the front piece, front piece and skip the next stitch and go in the next one with a slip stitch. We're basically going to be repeating that all the way until you reach the final corner. Now I'm going to meet you at this final corner okay so just continue what we was doing all the way across. Right I've now reached the final part where I'm at the end. Now because of the number of stitches that I've got, uh, because there's an even number of stitches for my hexagon here, I can't skip my last stitch. I don't have like a final stitch to skip and that's absolutely fine. That does not matter. If you worked your rounds up and you end up with an uneven number then you're fine. You've got your stitches that you skip and it will all work out perfect. But some of us, like me, uh, which is good, I'm glad that mine's like this because I want to show you, uh, 
uh, we have a skip a stick we've got left with two double crochets basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to our front piece I'm on my back at the minute and I've got two double crochets left on each one and the corner chain space okay so I'm going to drop my back piece I've chained my two and I'm going to go and still carry on by skipping the next double crochet and I'm going to go into the final double crochet with a slip stitch chain two come to my back piece and I'm going to skip that double crochet and I'm going to go into the final double crochet on here with a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain two and I'm going to go into the corner chain space with a slip stitch on the front piece chain two one more time and I'm going to go into the back corner chain space with a slip stitch there we go then you should have this like I don't even know if you'd call it a zigzag maybe I don't know but yeah I quite like it I think it looks quite cool so yeah remember if you had an uh, uneven number stitch count across here you just brought a bruise it you know miss one go in the next one miss one go in the next one you'll have to miss one and go straight into your corner chain space but because I had an even number of stitches I had to add an extra little bit right here but that's absolutely fine it does not matter okay so where are my scissors I'm going to fasten off I'm going to pull this end tight where is it here we are so that's one side done now for me because I had to add an extra bit at the end because of my even number of stitches I'm going to turn this piece around so that I'm going in the exact same direction and I can do the exact same thing at this end as well so both sides completely match okay so I'm going to go ahead and seam this it's exactly the same process as what we did here so if you feel you need to re rewind a little bit and watch it again to do your next side go ahead and do it yeah and I'll meet you back here when we've seamed both of our shoulder seams and our sleeves okay so i have seamed both of my shoulder and sleeve seams at the top the next section that we're going to do is add the neckline okay so what we're going to do first is the back i mean i'm going to say i was going to flip mine over but at the minute there isn't really a front or a back is there but just the way i'm looking at it, it feels like this is the front and that's the back so i'm going to put one piece to one side and it's going to work on one hexagon at the moment right what you're going to need to do now is look in the description section uh, underneath the video and you need to find the neckline measurement now i'm working up a size small and for me, it says the neckline is going to be seven centimetres. Now that's not seven centimetres in here. Basically, that means we're going to be adding seven centimetres onto each hexagon. Okay, so I'm going to start with my back piece. And basically, what we're going to be doing is adding some straight rows up and down, up and down until i reach seven centimeters you need to find the measurement that you're using or going to be working towards for your size that you're making because i'm small mine says seven okay so i'm going to do this one first let's make a start we are literally just going to be doing the granny stitch up and down up and down until i reach seven centimeters for a size small so let me attach my yarn now I'm still going with the whole turn your work business so my last round is actually facing me right now on the inside so that means I need to join mine at the top so what we're going to do actually 
actually before I make a start it's one thing I do want to say quickly is always keep your pieces like this because what what way you start on here you're going to be starting at the opposite end on this section so for this one for me I've got to start at the top and join in my top corner chain space but when I come to do this one I'm going to be working on this side so I'm going to be joining in at the bottom okay so you've got to remember that just because it's the top on this side it then means it's the bottom on this side so we're going to be doing opposites okay so I'm going to put that piece over there and I'm going to concentrate on this one so let me get my yarn and again like I said because my uh, previous round is facing me right now that means I have to join mine at the, at the top now if your previous round is facing the right side you're going to be joining in at the bottom on the wrong side okay we are literally just going up and down this one side and that's it not going around any corners just up and down one side so you need to find your first corner chain space before if you're at the top it's going to be before the seam that you've just made or if you're at the bottom it is literally going to be that bottom chain corner chain space okay so I'm going in with a slip stitch in that chain space right there oh no I'm not because it just fell out I'm going to chain three I'm going to place one more double crochet in this chain space so we're going to be starting off with I know that's your chain three but that is classed as your first stitch so it's going to be technically two double crochets at the beginning and we're going to end with two double crochets okay if you're feeling a bit lost don't worry i'm still going to go through it all with you okay so one chain three and one double crochet in that first chain space now just like you're doing the hexagons skip over the next three double crochets and go straight into your gap with three double crochets And then again skip these three double crochets and go straight into the next gap with three double crochets keep repeating that okay i'm pretty sure that now you've come this far you know what to do okay so i'm going to do it one more time skipping over those three double crochets oh my yarn's got stuck and putting three double crochets in this next gap so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to meet you when you've placed three double crochets in every gap along and I'll meet you when you're in the last gap, okay? Right, I have now gone all the way across this one edge only, repeating the same pattern with the granny clusters, three double crochets in each gap. And I'm now at the final chain space in the corner. And remember, because we had two double crochets at the beginning, that's how we're going to end this row with two double crochets in this corner. So we're going to skip the last three double crochets and put two double crochets in this corner chain space. And that's one row. I'm going to change colour. But I'm going to show you quickly, if you're not changing colour, then what you're going to do is chain three and then turn your work. OK, and then you're ready to go down the next side. But I'm going to change colour. Now it's up to you if you've got a certain way of changing colour. I'm just going to slip stitch mine in. But I know sometimes in the past I've um, finished my final stitch and changed colour that way. All personal preference just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean you have to you do it whatever way you want okay so I'm going to snip this off um, what color am I next green A bit of green I love these colours, I really do. 
I need to make myself a granny square jumper with this. I know I'm kind of doing it now with the hexagons, but I mean a basic granny square jumper. Love them. I do love them so much. Okay, so I need to turn my work now to join because I'm just joining mine with a slip stitch. Okay. So I'm turning mine and I'm going in that first stitch. I'm going to join it with a slip stitch. Okay, so for this next row, I'm going to chain three. That's your first double crochet. Now, for this row, we're only going to have one double crochet here. Okay, and then the last row had two. We're basically going to be alternating every row. The first one's going to have two at the ends, and the next one will have one, and then the next one will have two. And the next one will have one and that's how you keep a straight edge when you're doing your granny stitch so what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into this first gap here you've got your two double crochets from the previous round and then a gap we're going straight in there with three double crochets I don't think I've put my yarn on very well because it's not playing ball. One, two, three. And then again, repeating the same process along this whole row. Skip three double crochets and go straight into the next gap with three double crochets. Skip three double crochets and go straight into the next gap with three double crochets. Skip these three double crochets and go into the gap with three double crochets. I can hear someone outside taking their bins out. Oh, I didn't do mine. I'm going to have to run out there in a minute and do it quickly because they come so early. I don't want to get caught in my dressing gown. <laughs> it's happened too many times for me to mention. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to meet you back at this final gap. So you're just going to keep skipping your three double crochets, going in the gap with three double crochets. Exactly the same thing, okay? And I'll meet you back at this end. Okay, so I've gone all across my row again, doing the same stitch pattern with the granny clusters. I've now got one gap left and two double crochets. So, all right, well, actually, I've got these three double crochets here, but you know we're going to skip them, don't you? So, we're going to skip these three double crochets, and I'm going to go into this final gap here with my three double crochets. Oops, that will come undone. And then we're going to end the row exactly how we started it. And it's going to have one double crochet in the final stitch. So, you, you're going to skip over this first double crochet here because you've got two left skip the first one and go in the top of the last final stitch which is your turn and chain from the previous round so it might be a little fiddly to find it but sometimes I feel if I give it a little twist and like kind of go in through the top bosh straight in there there we go one double crochet in the final stitch now again I'm changing color but if you're staying with the same color you're going to be chaining three and turning your work and waiting for me to get to my chain three okay i'm just going to undo that because i'm changing color so let me just fasten off also remember that you need to keep an eye on how much you're adding so let's just put this down okay and we're going to measure from where you've just added your first or well, your rounds not rounds your straight rows okay now i know i've definitely not got enough just yet mine needs to measure seven centimeters i'm going to go in the middle because i always find it more reliable measurement in the middle rather than the ends where they kind of tend to like go out a bit more do you know what i mean just, look you know so always measure from the center okay i don't know exactly where the center is but we can just put it here roughly so i'm about two and a half centimeters so i've still got a 
a little way to go until I reach seven. Yep, seven for a small. Okay. Right, so I'm changing colour, aren't I? What's next on mine? Yellow. Oh, yellow. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> right. This is unlike me, you know leaving these ends i'd be straight on this if I, this is me doing it without the tutorial right now i'd be straight on this that'd be gone and this one down here that'd be gone too if you can see it i don't know how far you can see that one would be gone so when i stop this tutorial for a few minutes i'm going to be like can i get rid of them ends they can't stay they cannot stay okay so sorry trying to run away a bit there so my last stitch was here so I'm going to turn my work uh, where are we that bit I'm going to go straight in the top of the first stitch because I'm just joining mine with a slip stitch chain three so we're alternating the rows now we're now going to do exactly the same thing that we did for row one if you want to call it of the neckline so we're going to put another double crochet in this stitch okay in the same stitch as your chain three place another double crochet so you've got two there now so what we're going to do now with this bit is we need to go into the next gap now you've got a gap right below we're not going in that one okay because you're basically sitting on top of that so leave that gap alone You've got to think to yourself you're going to be doing two double crochets in one stitch and then you're going to be, go straight into skipping the next three double crochets and then you know what's going to happen now don't you we're going straight in the gap and we're going to do you guessed it three double crochets <laughs> i do love patterns like this so uh mindless aren't they so mindless you can just sit there and watch a bit of telly and then look at a row or three rows back and realize you've only put two double crochets in and not three and be like oh no i can't be honest i usually leave it especially if i've been changing color and weaving in ends i'm like nah i now i can't go back there that's in the past I've got to concentrate on the future and to be fair, once it's made and you've worn it a few times, you forget. I forget that that's only got two double crochets in a certain place, not three. I've got to be honest though, I've done quite well with this one. I think. I don't recall coming across any two double crochets rather than three. So I'm just chunting away here now and not really explaining what i'm doing but you know what we're doing don't you we're skipping over three double crochets going in the gap with three double crochets until we get to the end i might as well carry on now rather than pausing the video just sitting here chatting to myself Okay, so I'm now back in the final gap. I know there's that little gap there, but remember, we are not going in that one. We're going to go straight into the top of the final stitch. Okay, exactly the same as this round. This round, what am I talking about? Exactly the same as the beginning of the row. Lordy Lord, it's getting late here. I think I need to go to sleep. So, yeah. We're going to skip these last three double crochets okay and we're going to go straight into the top of the final stitch with two double crochets okay 
okay and you're going to keep repeating these two rows over and over until you get the measurement for your neckline okay let me fasten mine off because again i'm changing color like so might get my trusty tape measure out see how i'm doing Remember to measure from the middle. It doesn't have to be right directly in the middle, just somewhere in the middle. So I'm up to four and a half. I'm getting there. I'll probably, for me, I'm thinking maybe one or two more. Probably two, I'd say, to be on the safe side. So, yes. Um, do I show you it one more time? I'll do one more row with you, okay? I'll do one more row. And that is the, the one we've got one double crochet at the end not two so what's my next color a bit of orange oh my goodness oh my goodness i've just realized if i put two more in here if i do do two more i'm gonna have the rainbow on the back oh my god don't you just love it when things like that happen by chance and you've not even planned it So I've ended my row here. I'm going to turn my, oh no, that's not right, is it? No, I ended my row this way. Now I'm going to turn my work, join my yarn in, my new color. So this is the row where we only have one double crochet at the beginning, although technically it is your chain three, but it's classed as a double crochet. And then you've got these two double crochets directly below. And we're going to go straight into the next gap with three double crochets. And keep doing that all the way across the row, skipping your three double crochets, three double crochets in the gap. I will just pause the video and meet you back at the end again. Right, I've gone all the way across this row again and I've now got my final gap left where I'm going to dip, uh, la, 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 skip over these three double crochets and go straight into that gap with three more double crochets. Which leaves me with two double crochets and I'm going to skip the first one and go straight in that final one with just one double crochet. I'm gonna snip mine off again because I'm changing color again. But yeah, I hope that you've got the hang of what you're doing. So just remember, you're starting off the row with two double crochets. Then the next row, it's gonna be one double crochet. And then the next row is gonna be two. You can always rewind it and have a look as many times as you wish. That's the beauty of this video, isn't it? It's looking nice. It's looking nice, isn't it? I love it. So I'm going to continue doing this until I reach my neckline measurement of seven centimeters for a size small. And then I'm going to do exact same thing for this one. But remember that you're going to be going in the opposite end to where you started on this one. This is why it's always a good idea to just keep these like this. So you know that's like the left, that's the right. So yeah, because well, mind you, if you haven't got a desk, then it could be get a bit confusing, couldn't it? So just lay it out on the sofa, lay it out on the floor, whatever, just so you know. Okay. Otherwise, if you start attaching it to this side, when you it comes to joining it together, you're gonna be like, oh no, it's it's not right. It's so wonky. And then you have to undo it. No one likes to fraud things. I mean, I don't. I really don't. So there. Okay, I'm going to meet you back here when you've done all of the back of the neckline measurement. Okay. I've got to go drag my bins in before it's too late. Not in. Drag my bins out. I'm going to stop talking. See you soon. Right, I've now done both uh, sides on the back pieces for the neckline. I'm now going to do the same for the front, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, 
the neckline down a bit at the front. So what we're going to do is take our tape measure and measure down eight centimetres from the top. Eight. I'll put my finger there. That is literally in that gap. So you need to find the gap closest to eight centimetres. Take one of your stitch markers and hook it through that gap. Now, how many clusters have I got? I've got one, two, three granny clusters from the top. I'm just going to go over to the other side and count down one, two, three. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker in the other side. So now what we're going to be doing is working our rows, adding our rows the same amount as what you added on the back piece, but you're going to add them on the front. But we're only going to go as high as the stitch marker and then back down, okay? Exact same process as what we just done, but I'll do a couple of rows with you anyway. Can you believe my back ones? I, they end up getting the whole rainbow in it. I can't believe it. I literally cannot believe it. I had no idea that that was gonna happen, but how perfect is that? I'm going to join it as well with my dark blue, but we'll get there in a minute. Not too far away. Okay, so I'm going to do this bit first. It doesn't matter which piece you do. I'm going to put that one to one side. So looking at this, my last row, or my last round of the hexagons, uh, is actually on the wrong side right now. So I work them on here. That's the right side. So what I'm going to do, if I turned my work, I'd have the wrong side of the stitches facing me, which is that. So I'm going to start in this bottom corner. And join with my slip stitch. I'm going to do the exact same process again. Chain three, place one double crochet in this corner chain space. So exact same process, this row is going to start off with the two double crochets. Now we're going to skip these three and go into the next gap with three double crochets. Skip the three double crochets, go into the next gap with three double crochets. Skip the next three double crochets, go into the gap with three double crochets. And keep doing that. Right, I'm now in the final gap before my stitch marker. So this is where it's all going to end at this stitch marker. So I'm just going to skip the last three double crochets before the stitch marker and place two double crochets in this last gap. Just like so. I'm going to fasten off because I'm changing colour again. Remember, if you're staying, you're going to be chaining three. If you're staying with the same colour, chain three and turn your work and then you're ready to do the next row. Snip, snip, snip that off there. Change my colour. What's next? Green. I need to turn mine already, turn mine now, I'm going in my first stitch with a slip stitch, remember if you're changing colour you can do it however you wish, 
I'm just using the slip stitch going to chain three which is my first double crochet and that's only going to have that one there and we're going straight in the next gap with three double crochets and then skip in the three double crochets three double crochets in the next gap and repeating that again all the way down to the end of the row I've got my last gap here and I just need to place one double crochet in the final stitch which is the turn in chain or the chain three from the previous row and there we go slip mine off because I'm changing colour so we're going to keep doing those rows again back and forth back and forth well first row's got two double crochets at the beginning next one's got one then you got two one just alternating those two rows and adding the exact same amount as what you added to the back okay and then you're going to do the exact same thing on this side as well up and down just to the stitch marker so it's exactly the same as this one but remember you're going to be starting from the opposite end so I'm going to be going in I'm going to be starting this one in the same place as my stitch marker placing my two double crochets in the gap with the stitch marker and then going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards okay so I'll meet you back here again when you've done the exact same thing for the front and you've got the exact same rows as what you have for the back panel but on the front as well okay so i'll see you in a bit okay so i've now done all the rows for my front pieces as well so next what we've got to do is join them and we're going to do exactly the same join as what we've done for the sleeves nice and easy I'm going to do the back first, so I'm going to turn it round. I'm just trying to think how I'm going to do it actually. Let's have a look here and see. It doesn't really matter what end you start at, does it? I'm just going to put it like this first. Okay, so I've got my back facing me now. What I'm going to do is literally twist the whole thing around. And I'm going to work from the bottom up to the top okay just the back piece don't grab the front I'm not doing the front yet it's just going to be the back piece so let me get my yarn so in the front piece only I'm going to go in the first stitch which is for me is actually the chain three so I've got to go in the top of the chain three if I can get my thing in there with a slip stitch and then we're going to chain two and then we're going to pick up the back piece and go through the first stitch with a slip stitch and then chain two and I'm going to drop that bit and I'm going to come to the front again and I'm going to skip one stitch and go into the next one with a slip stitch and then chain two and I'm going to leave this front piece and I'm going to go into the back one skip the first stitch and go into the chain what am I talking about 
skip the first stitch and go into the next stitch with a slip stitch la, 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 la. chain two coming back to this front bit and then i'm going to skip the next stitch and go into the next one with a slip stitch chain two onto the back piece skipping the next stitch and going into the next one with a slip stitch and a chain two back to this front bit skip the stitch in the next one with a slip stitch chain two and we're going to be repeating that all the way down until you reach the top okay so i'm going to meet you there right i'm at, right near the end i've got two double crochets left so i'm just going to go straight into the last stitch or the last double crochet um remember that if you've got an even number of stitches then you won't be able to skip your final stitch so don't even worry about that just go straight into your um the last double crochet okay it's going to be absolutely fine so i'm going to chain my two i'm still on the back panel at the moment and i have a double crochet here to skip so i'm going to go straight in to my last double crochet with a slip stitch and i'm going to chain two and then i'm going to go to my back panel and i'm going to go straight in the last stitch with a slip stitch and that's that bit done that's the back bit done Tighten everything up a bit. So there you go, you've got this like little zigzag, haven't you? I quite like it, I do. I quite like it. Okay, so we've got to do the exact same thing on the front panel with the front bitch. Now we've got to flip it over. I'm going to put it on the side again like this. And then doing the same for the front. I've not even counted how many stitches I've got along here. So we'll find out when we get to the end, won't we? Let's have a look. Right, we're going to go in the first stitch. Remember, that, well, for me anyway, it's my chain three. So I've got to go in the top of my chain three. With a slip stitch. Oh, 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 wee, oh, wee, uh, uh. Come here, you. Chain two grabbing my back piece going straight through that first stitch with a slip stitch chain two coming back to the front skipping a stitch and going in the next one with a slip stitch chain two going to the back piece skipping a stitch going into the first or the next stitch sorry with a slip stitch chain two taking my front piece and I'm skipping the next stitch and going in the next one with a slip stitch chain two coming to the back skipping a stitch going in the next of a slip stitch chain two I'm just going to keep going now because I'm hoping you've got the hang of it it's now the third time we're doing it isn't it nice little easy seam And this one doesn't take as long either because it's on the front isn't it we didn't work as many stitches on the on the front for the neckline Nearly there.
okay so this is quite good actually because on this one I have got an even number of stitches okay so I'm now left with three double crochets so what I'm going to do is I'm still going to skip the stitch I'm going to go into the next one oh, with a slip stitch chain two do the same on the back with a slip stitch Oof, chain two and I'm going to go in my final stitch which is right next to the last stitch that we made but like I said before it's absolutely fine you know you're not going to notice it it's it's totally fine okay so we're going to go in the final stitch with a slip stitch chain two come to my back piece and go through that final stitch Oop. it's a bit awkward because it's the chain three there we go with a slip stitch like so now the fun part of this is that you get to try it on finally isn't that cute i know it's not all fitting in the screen but we can see the middle anyway can't we so yeah Um, what was I going to say? If you try it on and you think, oh, this neckline feels a bit big, it's meant to be a bit big because we're going to be adding ribbing around the whole of the neckline, which is going to draw it in. OK, so, yeah, I'll meet you back here in a little while. Right, for the next section, we're going to be adding length to our sleeves. So now you need to refer back to the written description underneath the video and you need to find the measurement for the arm length for the size that you are making. I'm making a small. Now, according to that, if I want to do a whole sleeve with no cuff, I'm going to be working towards 43 centimetres. If I want to put a cuff on mine, I like a cuff. You don't have to have a cuff if you don't want to. You don't even have to have a full length sleeve. If you're making it for yourself, you can stop the sleeve whenever you wish. If you're making it for somebody else, I've provided measurements for a long sleeve with or without a cuff. Now I'm going for the cuff. So I'm going to be adding length to my sleeves until they reach roughly around 38 centimetres. And we're going to be measuring that from the underarm. That's a bit awkward here because my tape measure obviously reads from left to right. At the minute mine's about 14 we're going to want it to be for me doing a size small about 38 so got a bit to add on there all that oh no you you probably can't see that actually can you so if I move over a bit can you see that maybe yeah so yeah we're going to keep adding and measuring from the underarm okay don't forget to keep measuring Right, let me get my yarn. Now we're going to be going and joining our yarn. Our yarn. <laughs> it's because it's really late here. I am um, think I'm probably half asleep. <laughs> right, we're going to be joining our yarn in um and in line with the underarm okay i know it seems like oh i'm going to join it at the top where the seam is i like to join it at the bottom so it's you know you don't really see it do you you don't see the seam going along the top of your sleeve you kind of have it down the bottom don't you so it's out of sight so i'm just going to turn this round a bit like this so looking at my last uh round on here that is the right side of my stitches. So I always turn my work. So I'm going to be going in through with the car, um, with the sweater facing me, the right side facing me in line with the underarm. Doesn't matter which gap you go in, but you're going to be joining in one of these gaps. Okay. Just join in a gap, any gap with a slip stitch. Oh, I keep doing that at the minute. 
must have a slippery hook look. I'm going to chain three, which is your first double crochet. Two more double crochets in this same gap. Skipping over the next three double crochets and going in the next gap with three double crochets. Skipping over the next three, going in the next gap with three double crochets. Basically doing what we've been doing the whole time. I'm going to keep doing that until we reach the seam at the top. Hang on, my yarn has got a bit stuck. anything when you're doing sleeves you do have to keep twisting it all round don't you right I'm now coming up to the seam I've got my two chain spaces either side of the seam what we're going to do is work three double crochets into that chain space which was once a corner. We're going to work three double crochets in there. I'm going to skip over that seam and act like it's uh, my three double crochets, even though it's not. But yeah, I'm going to skip straight over that. I'm going to go straight into this next corner chain space that once was a corner chain space. Okay, so skip over your seam and do three double crochets in the next chain space slash gap whatever you want to call it now and then we're going to continue all the way around until we get back to the beginning of the round Spin this round again. This is the last space for me, the last gap. So I've made it to the beginning of the round. I've got the three double crochets in the middle. Just going to skip over them and I'm going to join it right in the top of the chain three from the beginning of the round. Now I'm going to be changing colour, so I am going to fasten off. But if you're sticking with the same colour, all you're going to do is chain three, turn your work and put your two double crochets straight back into this gap here. Blah, blah, blah. And then it's going to keep going round and round and round. Let me undo that. Because I'm going to fasten off. I'll do one more round with you. Tighten that up. So I'm joining, I'm joining, changing my colour. What colour's next? Green for me. Right. Okay, now I'm going to join in my yarn, but I need to turn my work first. And I'm going to go into that same gap where we left off with a slip stitch. Just remember to keep turning your work because it makes it look even then to what you've been doing throughout the whole process. Getting that caught up. So we've done. Sorry, I didn't even talk through what I did then. <laughs> Obviously, I joined it with a slip stitch, chain three, and put my two double crochets in the same gap. Skipping over the next three, going in the next gap with three double crochets. This round's going to be nice and easy because you're just going to keep doing the same thing, skipping over your three double crochets, 
putting your three double crochets in the next gap all the way around and that's what we're going to keep doing until we reach the desired length that we need for me and I want to do a cuff I'm looking at around 38 centimeters and you know I say around because we might not get that exact measurement but as long as we're close to it that's all that matters Turn this round a bit. Halfway there. Right, I'm at my last bit here. I've done all my uh, double crochets in all the gaps. I've got three double crochets here that I'm going to skip over and go straight into the top of the chain three with a slip stitch, which is going to join the round. Now I'm fastening off again because I'm going to change my colour again. And you're just going to keep repeating the same thing until you reach the desired length. Remember to keep getting your tape measure. I know I'm nowhere near it because I've only done two, but where am I at? I need to get to 38 because I'm putting a cuff on mine. I'm at about 18, so I've got a little way to go yet. But I will meet you back here for the cuff section. Or if you're not doing the cuff section, then you can just skip over that little section. But yeah, I'll see you here soon. Okay, so I've been working my granny stitch on my sleeves um, and I'm adding a cuff to mine. So I need to go to around about 38 centimetres. I think I've gone a little bit over because I was trying to get more rainbow in, but pff, it doesn't matter because I'm going to keep working my cuff anyway until I reach the full sleeve length. Um, I've also provided those measurements as well because you might not want a cuff. So if you don't, Keep working towards the full sleeve length, or if it's for you, just try it on. That's the best thing you can do. If, you, if you're making it for yourself, just keep trying it on and see if you're happy with where the sleeve sits. Okay, so I'm now going to show you how I add a cuff. I'm just going to measure it. I was aiming for about 38 centimetres. I mean, I'm not that far off. I'm about 38 and a half to 39, which is fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, from now on, we're going to be working on the right side only. We're not going to be working on the inside, the wrong side. We're not going to be turning our work after each round. We're going to be solely concentrating on the right side only. Okay, I have actually already done one cuff as preparation. Like that. So yeah, I do like a cuff. I like to roll my sleeves up and they stay there for a bit if you've got to do the washing up or wash your hands it's just more practical isn't it so right let me get my yarn and my hook and what we're going to do is if you've got if you're not changing color then make sure that your work is right side facing you and you're just going to go straight in with your chain one. I'm going to join in on my last stitch, wherever that is, about here, chain in, I'll join in there, with a slip stitch, chain one. I'm going to place one single crochet in the first stitch and then we're going to single crochet two together for the next stitch. So I'm going to place my hook in the next stitch yarn over and draw up a loop, place my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, 
draw up a loop which has left me with three loops on each, on the hook and I'm now going to pull through all of them hoops at the same time. So that's how you single crochet two together if you didn't know. Next one, single crochet. Next stitch, single crochet two together. We're going to keep doing this all the way around. Single crochet, single crochet two together. 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 All the way around. Now if you get all the way around and you join it and you think, I don't like it, it's too tight. Then you could do single crochet, single crochet, single crochet two together. Or if you look at it and you think, oh, that's not tight enough. You could just do single crochet two together all the way around. And if you've done a larger size and you think that's still not enough, then you can still add another decrease round after this one. Just play about and see what cuff fits you best. But I did this one on my chunkier because I did a chunky one as well. And I've done this exact process for my chunky one. And I was happy with how that came out. This is Aran weight that I'm using. So I'm now on a single crochet, single crochet two together. Just keep repeating, single crochet, single crochet two together, all the way around. I've just got to twist my work around with me. So I'm all the way up to single crochet, single crochet, two together, single crochet, single crochet, two together, single crochet, single crochet, two together, all the way around. Oh, hang on, I've gone through too many loops there. There you go, that's better. Coming up near the end now, single crochet, single crochet, two together. You want this round to end on an even number so that you can do the ribbing. Um, so if you get to where I am, for example, and you've still got a stitch left, then I'm going to totally ignore that stitch and just skip over it and join right at the beginning. And if you need to add an extra stitch, just add an extra stitch in your final stitch. It's fine. But as long as you have ended on an even number of stitches, then you're all good for adding the ribbon. So join mine. Do my first stitch. Where are we? Here we are in here. There we go. And that's just drawn the cuff in a bit more. Next round, nice and easy peasy. We're going to be doing double crochets all the way around. So I'm going to chain three. That classes as my first double crochet. So I don't need to go in the bottom of this stitch. I need to go in the next one. And again, just keep in count of your stitches because it needs to be an even number of stitches. So I'm going to count mine just to double check. And then, yeah, so I'm going to probably be a bit quiet if I can, if I manage to be quiet. We are literally just placing double crochets in every stitch, okay? But not your first one because your chain three classes as your first double crochet.
yeah that's perfect I've ended up with 26 on mine not saying that's what you're going to have but as long as you're on an even number then we're all good for the ribbing okay so the next round is going to be the ribbon now if you want to change colour I'm sticking with the same one but I'm just going to explain what you're going to do if you want to change your colour what you will do is we're now going to be doing front post double crochet back post double crochet front post double crochet back post double crochet so because the first one is a front post double crochet you will join your yarn around that front post just go through it just like that I don't know if you can see that okay join your yarn through there with a slip stitch and then you will chain three and then you will do a back post double crochet where you come in from behind and over the top of the post and you'll do a back post double crochet that's how you will start but because I'm staying with the same colour I'm going to start a little bit different to that so because I'm sticking with the same colour I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to go straight down around the first um, DC bar from the previous round with a front post double crochet so you come in through the front and go behind that post and do a double crochet and then my next one I'm going to be doing a back post double crochet so I'm going to come in through the back and right through there and do a back post double crochet next one is going to be a front post double crochet come in through the front go behind the post next one's going to be back post double crochet come in through the back and come around the front of the post and you're going to keep repeating those two stitches all the way around and because you've got an even number of stitches you should end with a back post double crochet if you don't then you know that you've got an odd number of stitches and that the, the uh, ribbing won't look as neat it's not the end of the world but it won't look as neat or flawless than if you had an even number of stitches if you feel like you can't remember what you've done just keep looking back at the pattern that you're creating one one um, double crochet is sticking out the next one is falling behind it's pushed back the next one's sticking out the next one's pushed back just keep following that pattern so what am I on now I'm on a back post next one a front post next one back post front post back post I'll just twist my work round front post back post front post back post keep going all the way around there we go I've ended on a back post which is absolutely perfect I'm just going to go in the top of the first stitch now if you uh, if you ch changed your colour then you're going to be going in the top of a chain three but um, I didn't change my colour so I'm going right in the top of the first post stitch just like that with a slip stitch to join I'm going to do another round basically we're going to keep working this if you're making it for yourself like I said just keep trying it on and if you're happy with it then you know you I'm just going to stop here if you think no I want it to be a bit longer you can add a bit more if you're making it for somebody else and you're not quite sure when to stop uh, what we're going to be doing is working towards the full sleeve length so there's a number there which I've written if you didn't add a cuff we're now walking we're walking we're not walking we're now working our way towards that number so I'm doing a small and my number says 44 for the full arm length so I'm going to aim for 44 centimeters again I say aim because you might not get that exact amount but as long as you're near then we should be all good 
So because I'm sticking with the same colour, I'm chaining one. Again, if you was going to chain change colour, you'd need to attach it around the post from the previous round of a slip stitch and then chain three. But I'm not, I'm sticking with the same colour. So I'm chaining one, I'm doing a front post double crochet again, straight down. It's going to be a little bit bulky because it's where I had my chain one from the previous round. So get it round all that big old bulk of a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. You're going to be following the exact same pattern that you did for the previous round. And it'll be much easier to keep tabs of it now because you've got a guide from the previous round. The stitches that are pushed back are the back post double crochets. The stitches that are pushed to the front are the front post double crochets. I do like this ribbon because you can add to it if you feel like it's not long enough. That's the main reason why I like to add this ribbon. Although I do like the others because they do look they do look very nice, but I just, yeah, I like to be able to add as much length as I want and try it on as you go. So this one's more convenient for that, isn't it? Keep going around, oh, alternating those stitches between front post and back post. Keeping in with the same pattern that you did on the round before. Oh, hang on, I've not done that one very well. There we go, I'm now joining it to the top of the first stitch with a slip stitch. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you what to do if you're working towards that full sleeve measurement. You're going to measure it exactly the same as what you did when you was working towards the measurement if you was doing a cuff. Just lay this out the best I can, hopefully it's in the screen for you. Just get the tape measure. Obviously it's a little bit tricky now because it's, uh, the cuff's been drawn in, but just put it there. I need to do about one more round to make it 44. So I'm going to do my final round. I'm going to fasten off. I'm going to weave in my ends and then that's done. And I'm going to meet you back here where we're going to add the neckline ribbing. Okay. Okay, so I've done both my sleeves, very happy with them, very happy indeed. So the next section we're going to be working on is the neckline. And it's going to be nice and easy, I promise, it is going to be nice and easy. Same as the sleeve cuff, we're going to be working on the right side only. We will not be turning our work after the round, after each round, we're just going to stay facing with the right side throughout the whole process. Let me get my yarn and my hook. So I've got my card, my cardigan, I've got my sweater uh, with the front facing me right now. So where we are going to join our yarn is in if you're looking at this way, we'll say the top left corner, although if you're facing the other way, it is the right. But looking at it this way, we're on the left, aren't we? So we've got our seam here. And either side of the seam, we have got the corner chain spaces. One at the bottom, which is on the front panel, and one at the back, which is on the back panel. Now we're going to be joining our yarn in the front corner chain space. 
So I'm going to like twist it around a bit so I've got better access to it. Okay, so the seam is there. And here's my two corner ch chain spaces, front and back. We're going in the front one and we're joining in with a slip stitch. Chain three, two double crochets in the same chain space. We're going to skip straight over that seam and go straight into the corner chain space, which then brings us onto the back of the neckline with three double crochets. Now for this bit, this is where we done our insert rows on the back panel. So you just kind of need to eyeball this bit really and see what would be the best way of doing it. Let's have a look and see. So you want it to be even. Either side has got to be even. So for mine, it's going to fall the... Just take back my hook out a minute. If I skip this DC bar, I'm going to call it like a double crochet bar. I'm going to skip that one. If I went in that one with my three double crochets, skip the next one, went in that one with three double crochets, skip the next one. I'm going to end up in the center with three double crochets. And then I'll repeat the whole thing and I should end up back in this one. So skip that one, three double crochets, skip that one, three double crochets, skip that one, three double crochets that brings me back to the center they just need to be evenly placed along this section where we added our infill bars so let's actually put that into play shall we we're going to skip this D dc bar double crochet bar i call it a dc bar because i'm used to writing it down in a pattern so please bear with me if i keep saying dc bar no, I really mean double crochet bar. So I'm going to skip this bar here and I'm going to go into the next one. I'm going to go around that whole bar with three double crochets. I'm going to skip the next bar. I'm going to come into this one, go around the whole bar with three double crochets. It's quite good really that I've alternated my colour on every round because it's a bit easier to see isn't it which takes me into the centre so I'm going to go around that bar there I'm going to skip this one here the pink one and then go around my seaming bar with three double crochets and then repeat all the way across again skipping the next bar and going around this one with three double crochets Skipping the next bar and going around this one with three double crochets. Skipping the next bar and coming back into my corner chain space on the other side with three double crochets. That's brought me back to the shoulder seam bar, which I'm going to skip over that one and go into my other, pull that yarn tail out the way, into the next corner chain space, which brings me back onto the front panel with three double crochets. This bit's easier because you're following the stitch pattern. So skipping three double crochets, going into the gap with three double crochets. Again, skipping three double crochets, going into the next gap with three double crochets. And that's brought me to this section here, where there's another gap. Three double crochets. And that's now going to bring me onto the front panel which is going to be exactly the same as what I've just done along the back. So I'm skipping this first bar 
and I'm going in around the next one with three double crochets I'm just doing that all the way across just like we just done skipping the next bar going around this one with three double crochets skipping the next bar which brings me onto my seam bar I'm going around that with three double crochets Skipping the next bar, going around the next one with three double crochets. Skipping the next bar, going around this one, the next one with three double crochets. Skipping the next bar, I'm going, oh no, hang on, have I just skipped that one? Have I gone? No, I've gone straight in that one, look. Skipping the next bar, that's brought me back onto uh, my side bit, like the front. So three double crochets in there. No, you didn't skip one then. That wouldn't have been good, would it? And then back onto the side. So we're back onto the normal stitch pattern where we're skipping over three double crochets and going into the next gap with three double crochets. Skipping the next three double crochets and going into the next gap with three double crochets. And that has brought me back to the beginning of the round. I nearly call it the row. The round. Because we're working in the round, aren't we? So I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And that's the first round done. Nice and easy. See, that wasn't that bad at all, was it, that? Now, this is just like what we did with the cuff section. What we're going to do is a whole round of DCs, double crochet, look, I'm calling it a DC again, look, a whole round of double crochets. And again, it needs to end on an even number. So if you get to the end and you're like, oh, it's an odd one, don't panic. Just place an extra double crochet in your final stitch. It'll be absolutely fine, I promise. Or, if you want to, you can skip the final double crochet and just join it. And then you'll still have an even number. Just always make sure you've got an even number. So you're chaining three, which is classing as your first double. So you've got to go in your next stitch. You're just doing double crochets in every single stitch. All the way around until you get back to the first chain three what I'm going to do I think is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to meet you back after we've done this whole round of double crochets because I need to count my stitches and yeah I'd rather not do it on camera because I'll start going like one two three oh oh no let's count let's count too much pressure so I'm going to pause it and I'll meet you back here when you've done the whole round of double crochets with an even number Remember the even number. Okay. I'm at the end of my round. And I've just got to join it now with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And there we go. So same again now as the cuffs. We are going to be doing front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, all the way around the neckline. So because I'm sticking with the same colour, I'm going to chain one. If you want to change your colour, remember to join around the front post of the first stitch with a slip stitch and chain three and then go straight onto your next back post double crochet. Because we're sticking with the same colour, I'm going to chain one and go straight down around that first post with a front post double crochet then a back post front post back post front post back post front post back post 
Oh, didn't do that one very well. Back post, front post, all the way around, just like the cuffs. Hopefully you're a pro at it now if you've just done the cuffs, or maybe you're a pro at it anyway. You don't need me to keep saying front post, back post. Oh, I know, I know this already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to meet you back when I get to the round or the, the beginning of the round. So remember, just do front post, back post, front post, back post, all double crochets, front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet. Right, I'm now reaching the end of this round. My first round of front post, double crochets and back post, double crochets. I'm now going to slip stitch to the top of the first one, the first front post double crochet to join like so. And now you could have a little look and admire what you've done, look. Oh my goodness, what a difference it makes when you start putting these little bits onto it. Let's get rid of that bit. I keep thinking that's one of my stitches come out, but it's not, it's just my yarn tail that I haven't tucked in yet. Love it. Uh, see now, eyeballing it, I think I might possibly just leave mine with that one round. I made a chunky version before I did this one and I only did one round on that one because obviously chunky, your sleeves are taller and I just did one round. I actually think I'm looking at this and I think that looks fine with just the one round on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try it on. And if it's okay, I'm going to snip it off and fasten off and weave in my ends. Which I think it is going to be okay. I mean, it looks fine to me. So you are going to have to like eyeball this bit a bit to see how you want it. I mean, you could keep doing this round over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And you could turn this into a cowl neck. I don't really want a cowl neck though, because I want to wear this on like a cool summer evening with a little top underneath. and Because it's quite... Um, holy anyway isn't it the granny stitch It'd be nice just to throw it on looking all nice and bright a little pair of shorts i say a little pair of shorts and never get my legs out in the summer ever <laughs> so maybe a pair of jeans or something i don't know but yeah i'm gonna fasten off i'm very happy with this i'm gonna fasten off and i'm gonna meet you back here where we're gonna do the length so remember if you want to add an extra round just do exactly what you've been doing for the cuffs chain one front post double crochet straight down around that bottom uh post right underneath you and keep going front post back post front post back post front post back post until you feel happy with how your neckline is looking okay i'll see you back here in a bit right i've weaved in all my ends around my neckline and i'm now ready for the next section which is where we're going to be adding the length now at the minute, mine comes just under my bust measurement, not under my bust measurement, it literally comes just under my bust. Um, I've provided measurements for just below the waistline and also a hip measurement. But if you're making it for yourself, you can add as much or as little as you want. You could have a cropped one. Although what I will say is uh, the bigger sizes we already have quite a bit of length going on. So you may find from extra large to 2XL onwards, you might not even add, need to add any length, which pff, bonus for you, do you know what I mean? I've got to add loads. Whereas you might think, do you know what? I'm quite happy with this. Or you might think, yeah, I might just add two or three rounds. Because uh, at the bottom, we're going to be adding exact same ribbing again. So, yeah. Right, let's begin. I'm going to go to the just below my waist measurement for mine. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip 
the jumper, jumper, I've called it a jumper. We're trying so hard not to call it a jumper. It's a British word, isn't it? I think we're probably the only people that call it a jumper. Everyone else knows them as sweaters. And I, would, I thought I was doing so well. It was doing so well. And now I've just done it, look. Never mind, call it a jumper. But what I mean is a sweater. I'm going to flip my sweater around so the back side is facing me. And then I'm going to turn it around so it's upside down so i've got my neckline at the bottom and i've got this bit at the top right we're going to join in the center now you've got to remember how you put your stitches along the back neck and the front neck on this bit mine fell so that i worked my middle stitch around my seam bar so that is where i'm going to join my yarn is around the seam bar if you had if yours is in one of these two bars then you can join it in one of them it's going to mirror image exactly what you've just done around your neckline around the front neckline and the back neckline and mine just so happens that it's going to go into the seam bar so let me just grab my yarn Basically, once you've done this first round, you're just going to be doing rounds and rounds of granny stitch, just like you did with your sleeves. Nice and easy. Like, this looks quite technical, this sweater, but it's actually really easy, isn't it? Really easy to make. It's just the same stitch pattern throughout. So... I'm going to go around my seam bar with a slip stitch, join my yarn. Oh, no, did that again. How many times have I done that, do you think? I think this must be this hook. Super slippery. Not complaining, though. I love my clover hooks. Am I allowed to say that? I mean, I'm not, they're not uh, sponsoring this in any way, shape or form. This is just my personal preference. To be fair, I've only ever had like little metal ones, cheapy ones from eBay. And they really hurt my hand. I didn't know what it was. And someone said, it's your hook. I was like, oh, is it? And I just got these. I've never tried any others. And I probably should, really. Sorry, I'm babbling, right? Chain three. <laughs> I've joined with a slip stitch. And now I'm doing my chain three as my first double crochet. And now I'm going to put two double crochets around the same seam bar. And then we are skipping the next bar and we're going around the next one after that with three double crochets. Skipping the next bar, going around the next one with three double crochets. Skipping the next bar and that's brought me back into my first corner chain space. So three double crochets in there. Now I'm just going to follow the normal stitch pattern until I get round to my back infill bar, um, infill rows. So skipping three double crochets and going into the next gap with three double crochets. I'm sure you know the drill by now, hey? Just keep going in all the gaps, skipping over all the double crochets. And placing three double crochets in all the gaps. Lost that one. Get back in there.
right I'm now back to my corner chain space and I'm skipping over my next bar and going into the next one with three double crochets skipping over my next bar and going into the next one with three double crochets if it so happens that you haven't got another one to skip and it's just your seam bar well then you just go straight into your seam bar it's not going to matter as long as it's equal on both sides just need to keep it even on equal on both sides Right then, I'm back onto my hexagon part. So I'm following the stitch pattern again, nice and easy. Going all the way around. Right, I'm now coming back onto my infill bars. I say infill bars, they were my infill rows really, but we're going around the bars, aren't we? However you did it on the neckline, just mirror image that. As long as they're all on here evenly on both sides, that's the main thing. Right, I'm joining with a slip stitch to my first chain three. I'm going to be fasting off here because I am changing colour every round. Must be crazy, but it's going to look amazing. I know it is. So if you are sticking with the same colour, you'll be chaining three and then turning your work and just going all the way around again. Remember to keep turning your work after each round to keep it all looking the same as what you've done on the rest of the sweater. God, I nearly said jumper again. Slipping tonight. <sighs> Don't know what's going on. Right, I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to show you how you're going to measure uh, the garment. Should we just call it a garment? Sound a bit posh, I think, when I say that. I'm going to measure my garment. Right, so we're going to have it so the back side is facing you. Like so. I hope that's all fitted into the shot. Yeah, it seems like it has. So you're going to be looking again in the written description under the video where I've provided you with some measurements. This is if you're um, making it for somebody else or if you're doing it for yourself, just keep trying it on and think, yeah, I'm happy with that. Or no, I'm going to have a few more. Remember, you're going to be adding a little bit of ribbon around the bottom. Well, I say a little bit. I mean, you can add a massive chunky one. It's totally up to you. It's your sweater. You do whatever you want with it. I'm just giving you the basic uh, tutorial for how to make it, but you can customise it any way that you wish. So, I am making a small and a saying to go just uh, below the waistline. Mine needs to be about 50.5 five centimeters yeah 50.5 
so we're just going to go right from the top and down or actually we're well, no, actually we're going to go from not from the neckline don't go from the neckline sorry we're going to go from like uh these rows here where we added all the infill bars we're going to go from there okay so I'm at 29 roughly. I can't bloody need just to go in there. So my, I've got about that much. I've got about that much to do, look. <gasps> it's okay. We've got this. We can do this. It's only because I'm changing colour every round, which makes it more time consuming. But, you know, you put in the effort, you reap the benefits, because I know it's just going to look amazing if I change colour every single round. So keep working towards that measurement or like I say, if you're doing it for yourself, just stop whenever you wish. Keep trying it on. So I'm going to meet you back here again when you've got the full length that you desire. And then we'll do the final part of the tutorial where we'll add the bottom ribbon. And that's it. You'll be done. Amazing. Right then. I'll see you soon. Okay, so if you've got this far, massive pat on the back to you because we're now at the final section of the pattern. So we've just basically got one more thing to do and you uh, own a fantastic new sweater. Now I decided to do two rainbow repeats for mine and that took me to about 47 centimetres. I was aiming for 50.5, but I tried it on and I was very happy with where it is. And I'm now about to add ribbing anyway, so all good. Right, should we do it? Should we do it? Woo <laughs> oh, it's exciting when you get near the end, isn't it? Right, let me just get my yarn. I've still got my jumper. Oh, I just call it a jumper again, that. Still got my sweater upside down. With the back facing me okay so again exactly the same with the ribbing before we are going to be working with our garment right side facing all the time we're not going to turn our work after each round okay so what we're going to do is if you're changing your color then go in for your final stitch if you're staying with the same color We'll just be chaining one and turning your work if it's wrong side facing. So right side facing, I'm going in my stitch with a slip stitch, chain one, I'm going to place a single crochet in the same stitch, which is one, and then we're going to be doing a decrease round. So when we get to stitch stitch number six is it six i think it's six we're going to be doing a single crochet two together so let me think single crochet one two three four five six yeah that is right so what we're going to do is we're going to do one two three four five six yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm just working out in my head then. We're going to do five single crochets and then the next stitch we're going to do single crochet together. Okay, and we're going to repeat that all the way around. So I've already done one here. So that's one single crochet in the next stitch. Two, three, four, five. And then the sixth one is going to be single crochet two together. Single crochet two together. So you're going to do five single crochets, single crochet two together. Should do it again. One, two, three, four, five. And then six is a single crochet two together. Do it again five single crochets one two three four five and then the sixth one is a single crochet two together i'm just going to repeat that all the way around five single crochets one two 
three, four, five, and the sixth one, single crochet, two together. I'll do it one more time with you, and then I'll pause the video and meet you at the end of the round. So five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and then the six is single crochet two together. Okay, so keep repeating that all the way around and I'll meet you back here when you got to the end of your round. Okay, I'm at the end of my round. And again, the same as the other ribbing, this needs to end on an even number. And mine falls that my even number falls in my last stitch. But if it doesn't, uh, you can always skip your final stitch and go straight into this one. Because if your final stitch ended on an, an odd number, then just skip over that last stitch and go straight into the top of your first single crochet to join. Okay, that's absolutely fine. It's a decreased round anyway. Uh, but mine turns out that my even number does fall in my final stitch. Now I'm going to join it to the top, to the top, to the single crochet at the beginning of the round with a slip stitch. Right, and now we're ready for the next round, which is going to be the double crochet round. And you've done it a few times already, haven't you? So we're just going to do a double crochet all the way around. We're going to chain three. That's going to be your first double crochet. Go in your next stitch double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, all the way around. In every single stitch, just a double crochet. I'll do a couple more and then I'm going to meet you again once I get all the way around because I need to count again need to make sure I've definitely got my even number of stitches. Okay, I'm now at the end of my round. I've got my even number of double crochets. So I'm going to join it to the top of this chain three with a slip stitch. Now we're going to do the ribbon. Exactly the same as what we've been doing before. Just a front post double crochet, back post double crochet. So I'm going to chain one and go straight down around this first double crochet post with a front post double crochet. And then the next one is the back post double crochet. And then a front post double crochet. And then a back post double crochet front post, back post, front post, back post. Okay, so you're going to keep repeating that all the way around and you repeat that as many times as you wish and that's it. You just got to tuck in your ends, weave your ends in and you'll be done. So I'll meet you back here when I've done my ribbon. Okay, right then, it's all done. I can't believe it. I can't quite fit mine in the screen, look. But if I just roll it up a bit, hopefully you can see my bottom ribbing. Um, I only decided to do one round of the ribbing in the end because I felt like it matched my neckline where I did one round on my neckline as well. Again, like I say, you can add as many rounds as you wish to it. Uh, so yeah, that's it. It's all done and dusted. Just want to say if you got this far, then thank you so much and for watching. I'm really happy with my sweater and I really hope that you're happy with yours too. Uh, I'm over on Instagram, so if you are on there and you make one, just give me a tag because I would absolutely love to see them. I do, I love to see them so much. Um, so yeah, uh, I will definitely be seeing you all again soon. Well, not seeing you obviously, but I'll be back for sure. Thank you everybody.